I woke up this morning with a jack of spades in my head. I woke up this morning with a jack of spades in my head. But I had to listen closely because I couldn't hear a word that he said. I woke up this morning with a jack of spades in my heart. Well, I woke up this morning with a jack of spades in my heart. I had to listen close. I had to listen close. I had to listen close now, people. Oh, break it down. All right. I woke up this morning with a jack of spades in my feet. I woke up this morning with a jack of spades in my feet. Tread softly. I had to tread softly. I had to tread softly. Oh, break it down. Then I woke up this morning with the jack of spades in my head. I woke up this morning with a jack of spades in my head. I had to listen closely, people. I said I had to listen close now, people. I said I had to listen close because I couldn't hear a goddamn motherfucking word that he said. Ladies and gentlemen, to the Dirty Pat Walsh channel with me, your host, Dirty Pat Walsh. Indeed. <clears throat> Here in the meth end of town. Okay, I have not one, not two, but three cans of Copenhagen snuff in here. One of them has a dip inside. See if I can find the right one. I believe it is not this one. I also believe it is not this one. Yes! One, one dip left in the Coke snuff can. I've been saving this. I've been saving this dip because now I know where to get cheap, good American dip. I don't have to buy this for 30 bucks a can anymore. <laughs> yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, I do hope they have it. I hope it's one of the products they sell because it is one of my favorite tobaccos. I don't want to go without my Copenhagen snuff. So, But we shall see. Anyhow, that's not the point of this. The point of this is uh, 
to address a comment that suit and tie dip and chew guy made <laughs> he said this is the whitest ghetto he's ever seen in his life and I will concur on that um, the, now the part I was taking you through yesterday isn't really the, what I would call the meth end of town it's like the main street on the outskirts of the meth end of town I'll do a video one day going through the actual area that I call the meth end of town but uh, I might have to do it at night because that's when the that's when the oogie boogies come out, you know. Um, I used to I used to when I first started calling it the meth end of town. I used to work as a baker, and uh, I would you know have to walk from my house to downtown through the area uh, every night to go to my baking job and walk home early in the morning. And the things that you see. Mm -hmm, I can't count the times I was propositioned by meth head cook hookers and uh, drunk guys hassling me, drunk guys trying to mug me. I had to carry like a utility knife in my pocket. I actually pulled it you know, on two separate occasions. Um, nobody ever got me. I can be a mean motherfucker when I want to be. <laughs> but uh, luckily I don't live that life anymore and nor do I have to be in those situations so much anymore so but yeah the reason I start calling it the meth end of town is because just a couple blocks down the road um apart from all the everything like being hooker alley being down there and all kinds of shit and the fact that it's easier to score a gram of meth at the convenience store not the one I went to yesterday but the other one and more in the heart of it uh it's easier to get methamphetamine than it is to get cigarettes there. So that's what I've heard. Personally, I'm not a crystal meth fan. I've tried it, but I don't like it. Um, there's only one stimulant drug that I actually like. And you probably know what it is. Um, but I, even that, I haven't done that for years. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm more of a, I like smoking weed, <laughs> and uh, I take my prescription, my prescription narcotics, but, you know, yeah, I'm not a meth head. But anyhow, uh, there's a house two blocks down that uh, blew up, because it was a meth lab a few years ago, and uh, it was a biker clubhouse, and uh, yeah, fucking... I think it was 300 rats ran across the street to the little Tim Hortons drive through kiosk. And uh, Tim Hortons is a Canadian donut shop, if you didn't know. Uh, and they had to close down the Tim Hortons for a week to exterminate the rats. <laughs> so, they're pretty creepy. But uh, anyway, there's a video in here somewhere where I actually take you by that house. And you can see it's blown up remains. Because it wasn't so far after it happened. But, uh, yeah. So yeah, the the walks I've taken you on so far, pretty, pretty nice, pretty uh, almost verging on a nice neighborhood. But I'm not taking you out at peak meth head hours. And uh, as far as you know, he said it's the whitest ghetto he's ever seen, and I suppose he means that culturally, like I'm walking by the Holiday Inn, you know, or whatever. But Peterborough is a very white town. I think we're like ninety percent white here which is kind of weird. Uh, you know, I come from where I grew up. Uh, I grew up in the in the greater Toronto area in a town called Oakville. and spent a lot of time in the city and in Hamilton as well. And, you know, moving to very culturally diverse. Even my hometown, had, like where I lived was, I lived where all the cool people little shopping like it was like the the ethnic part of town you know what I mean but it was bigger than we had here that's for sure um, so yeah it's a pretty white bread town but there you go so you're right suit and tie dipping shoe guy <laughs> but uh, I'll take you out I'll take you out to show you really where, where why I call it the meth end of town when the weather gets nicer so yeah there you go
I had a really cool thing happen this morning. Uh, I woke up to uh, a message from a fella who, uh, now a few months ago, Pete Shelley of the Buzzcocks died. Buzzcocks are one of the greatest punk rock bands ever to exist. They were an early, like late 70s British punk band. Um, you know, and while, while anyhow, Pete Shelley, the, the front man, died. And uh, so we all, we, you know, we did a little, me and Rob did a thing at the radio station in tribute to him. And uh, a fella, through my internet connections, uh, contacted me. He was a, he's a writer for a fanzine. And he wanted to write about how, what people's thoughts on Pete Shelley and his songwriting, had the impact they had on them and stuff. And Pete Shelley, you know, even though my music sounds nothing like his, you know, he taught me that, uh, you can write really harsh, brutal songs about love, you know? Um, like, the Buzzcocks were a punk rock band right along with the Sex Pistols and the Damned and the Clash who were all singing about chaos and politics and serious stuff like that. Well, the Buzzcocks wrote love songs, you know, which was pretty interesting and very cool. Anyhow, this fanzine writer uh, asked me my thoughts, asked me to write a paragraph about Pete Shelley and his impact on my life. So I did that and uh, sent it off to him. I didn't think anything really of it until this morning when he wrote to me and he said, uh, yeah, I published that, your thing in, that, in, the, in the fanzine and a, a, a book uh, about like a book about Pete Shelley, like his biography, uh, picked up, picked it up, and uh, they're going to include that article in the in the book. And my quote is in the book, so that's what he that's what he was messaging me about. He said, you know, this is what happened. It's totally aces, you know. And uh, and by the way, your quote made it into the book, so I'm going to have to get my hands on a copy of this because uh, I want I want to see it. <laughs> And, and I want to read it too. I love Pete Shelley. Yeah, that was that was pretty neat. A little bit where you, you see me playing guitar uh, in this video. Uh, I have a card stuck in my strings. I've done videos on this before, but that's an old, old way of playing guitar. Uh, Johnny Cash kind of uh, brought it to fruition, I think. He did it in a much more sophisticated way than I do it, I think, but... It's called playing sock. Uh, mocha. Mocha. It's called playing sock style. You stick a card in your strings and just use your guitar like a snare drum. You know, I think it's super cool. I love playing that way. But yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. And, uh, yeah, got my old dulcimer out for a, for a spin there. I love playing that thing. That thing is funny. When I bought it, I thought it would be much more a thing I'd play on stage much more, but it's it's pretty limited in what it can do, you know. So it's not really. I don't think it's something I'm going to include in my in my stage performance. But uh, it's also one of the things when you pick it up and you start playing it, you realize that like an hour has gone by before you put it down. Like it's just it's like it's it's addictive to play, you know. You can just sit and ding, 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 for fucking hours. That's great. And, yeah. Anyhow, this is just kind of a random video of a bunch of shit. And uh, I hope you dig it. And people seem to be liking my compilation videos, it seems. And it's a good way to keep from spamming my, my, my audience with fucking five videos a day. I can just cram them all into one. So, there you go. Anyhow, to all my good people, much love. Have a blessed day. And uh, it's beautiful and sunny here, but it's really fucking cold. I got to go up and see my, pick up my little children's from school. They're not so little. They're, we call, I used to call them the littles. Now I call them the middles. Um, yeah, I'm going to go pick them up and uh, preside over their music lessons this evening. <laughs> so that'll be fun. But all right, until then. Be well, stay free, and have a blessed day.
Woo! <laughs> 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 <laughs>